after the storms tore through this neighborhood. And good morning, everyone. I'm Felix Vega. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday for Good Day Tampa Bay. Neighbors we spoke to on this normally quiet cul-de-sac were shocked by the flurry of police activity that occurred here last night. Police chased Harris to Hubert and Henderson, but unfortunately he turned down this dead end street. He got out of the car and fled on foot. Many of the people that are out here slept outside in their cars just outside the shelter, but a lack of sleep or the sweltering Florida heat was not going to keep them away. That's when police say Harris ran into this small office building, ran up these stairs and out onto the roof. Now, from your experience as a prosecutor, why would you think that she wouldn't talk? There's any number of reasons. They, her credibility was so damaged from minute one with telling the lies that before when uh, Kaylee first went missing mm -hmm. to all the cover-up that went into it afterwards. She might not have been comfortable on the stand. They might not have felt confident putting her on the stand. So no matter how many of us sit up here and talk about this case or lawyers talk about it or the court of public opinion talks about it, they're the ones that are going to have to decide whether or not she's telling the truth. Between the two. Well, with Sandusky's case, there's gonna, there was going to be a lot of negative publicity. You were going to see all those victims come into court. We heard that they were ready to testify and ready to come in and tell them exactly what happened uh, between them and Jerry Sandusky. Basically, the whole lockout situation comes down to three different things. There was one lawsuit that we have right here that was filed by Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and some of the other players. It's a class action lawsuit accusing the NFL of antitrust violations. It's a relaxing drive like this up the Suncoast Parkway and a good deal on a new home that attracted Tim and Megan Long to one Pasco County subdivision in 2006. We couldn't compete with the prices down in Tampa. I mean, there was no way we could afford it. It was the best price for the area and we had an easy way to get to the veterans and get to work. And that's why Tim and Megan moved here to Suncoast Meadows and the quiet suburban street of Clover Blossom Circle. But their dream quickly became a nightmare. Uh, first time we found out was about uh, two years ago when the HOA notified us they were looking into it against Lennar uh, to find out why uh, you know the methane tests were, uh, were were higher than they were supposed to be and what the whole idea was with the methane and the landfill. It's this giant field on the back side of the property that covers the landfill that was initially discovered. What was more disturbing to Tim was the testing going on right behind them. Yeah, so over here you're going to look at the, that's the actual landfill area. If you look all the way into the back all the way to the back right, you'll see a little building, and the little the little white building is actually where they're te where they actually watch the testing of the landfill for the uh, methane levels. And all along the street, you find metal caps like these covering methane wells used to monitor the levels of methane gas underneath. As Tim spent more and more time going over his contract and then the HOA declarations, he learned a lot more about where he lived, and the more he started to question why he was living here. This contract over here, this was with it like this. And you've got a table of contents that goes anywhere from talking about use restrictions from laundry, cooking, decoration in front of your house, garbage cans. When they signed the contract for their house, the only mention of the landfill was buried deep in the back of the homeowners association rules, not in the contract itself. And then it says no trenching or digging. Well, what about, what about the, the pools? This is the pool Tim is talking about, a pool deck built right on the edge of that same field that covers the landfill. A uh, buyer has to be notified by the seller that a landfill is in the area. Why didn't Lenar, Lenar tell us that originally? This is what's weird. Like, see how bad it is? It's like a new neighborhood. As we walked the streets, Megan was quick to point out massive cracks in the pavement, a sign of what may lie underneath. What Tim and Megan also didn't know was how far that landfill went underground. They've explained to us, but we don't know for a fact that that, um, that line they've drawn is real. I mean, how do you know that? Unless you bring somebody out independently and have them actually do a testing and say, this is where the real line is. Had he known more up front, buying a home in Suncoast Meadows wouldn't have happened so quickly. When Tim and Megan moved into this house, they expected to stay here a long time and even start raising a family. But with a new baby on the way, their only concern is not just about selling the home, but also staying here at all. I'm, I'm concerned about it because we found out three months ago that we're going to have a child in July. And, uh, and for us to hear from the, the uh, fire department that there's a risk of an explosion uh, happening two streets over from me, and we don't know what's in the soil either. So obviously there is a, a risk that why would I want to live in a home that I don't know what could be the damage to my kid or to myself or my wife 20 years from now. As for selling their home in the long run, Tim is not very optimistic. So how, what are the chances of us being able to sell a house in here? There's no telling if it really could happen or not. And I want, I want somebody to give us the truth of what's in the soil, what's in the air.
we need to find out from the state by independently being having testing done to see what we're talking about here. Okay. You know, it's, it's more tragic than it is frustrating. That's how the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office described the hit and run death of a bicyclist early Saturday morning here on Brisby Downs Boulevard near USF. Investigators say they received a call at 1.49 a.m. alerting them to what had happened. A white female bicyclist was uh, discovered on the curb here just north of the intersection in the, nor in the southbound lanes in the bicycle lane and uh, she was uh, dead at the scene. Traffic homicide detectives were still walking the scene Saturday morning, collecting evidence and looking for clues that would lead them to a suspect. By late Saturday, they had matched debris left at the scene to this red Ford Explorer found at an apartment complex. It may also be the same Red Explorer that was seen minutes before the crash at Brisby Downs in Fletcher. The caller said that the vehicle was driving erratically and at one point apparently the vehicle drove through the red light. As the investigation now turns to finding the driver that hit this young woman, we know one thing for sure. She was doing everything and had everything she was supposed to be riding in this bike lane. As for that young woman, USF officials tell us she does have ties to the university. However, investigators would not say more until her family could be notified. As much as it's a tragedy for the community here, it's going to be much worse for the family. Simon Geist recently saw another man get hit getting off a bus at this same intersection. As soon as he got up, the other car was coming through. He never stopped. So what happened, the guy was about to hit the guy, threw it on the other side of the road, and he was about to leave. So I came out from over there and I told him to pull over. As for the driver of the vehicle involved in this crash, the sheriff's office has a message for them. If you were involved in this, you know, it, it, the best thing you could possibly do is come forward. Felix Vega, Fox 13 News.